Hey guys, welcome to Techno Savior. Today in this video, I'm going to show you how you can run .NET 6 in Visual Studio Code directly. So the best part about .NET right now is that it is uh, machine independent. So basically, it can run on Windows, it can run on Mac. So this is the website that I'll be that I'll be referring to set up the, the .NET uh, environment. Although it is relevant to .NET Core, but that doesn't matter because .NET 6 is kind of a upgraded version of .NET Core and I'll show you how do you, how can you install the latest version of .NET SDK. So the prerequisites over here are you should have the VS Code Docker extension installed. You should have a .NET development environment installed and you should be having a C Sharp code for Visual Studio. It's basically for the code prettifying and other stuff. Okay. So what you can do is over here, click on .NET download the latest version of .NET. As I said, the latest version of .NET is nothing but the .NET 6. That is the stable version as of now. So you can download this based on your Windows or Mac. Again, Mac has different uh, versions. Windows has different versions. Then the other installation process are like simple. You just go do a step by step install and it, it should get installed. But how do you verify in order to check whether all the system is up and running for .NET then what we can do is we'll just go into the terminal. Now what I'll do is if I'll type docker, it should give me uh, this information. It basically tells that, okay, my docker is up and running. Okay. Or I can just type docker dash V to show me what version of docker is installed in my machine. Similarly for .NET, you can type .NET dash dash version. Okay. It will give you the latest version, the .NET version that is installed in your machine. So I have Docker of uh, Docker version of 20 and .NET 6. So now since uh, my prerequisites are installed, at least the Docker and the .NET is there. Let me open the Visual Studio. So I've created this uh, ms.NET 6 folder. It's empty folder as you can see. I have the Docker extension already installed over here. If you don't have the Docker extension, you can just go over here, search for Docker and you will find the Docker extension by Microsoft. Do install it. It's pretty great. At the same time, I have some other plug plugins installed. Okay, I use it for my day-to-day -day activities. So let's keep it aside. .NET new. Okay, so for the terminal, if you don't have the terminal handy, you can just click on this icon here. It will open up the below taskbar and you can click on the terminal. Okay, so that's how I opened it, new terminal. .NET new, what do I want? So I want a web API, dash dash, no https so as you can see the scaffolding happens scaffolding is nothing but like a template that .NET has in its uh, internal structure okay so as soon as you give the command okay give me a web api project it will quickly create all the necessary controllers uh, the apis the program.cs file some dummy file to get you started very quickly so as you can see uh, we have this uh, weather forecast okay it has some properties and uh, you have this program.cs file that is the starter file of this project okay and you have the controller weather forecast controller now what we'll do is we will run this program directly in docker so there are multiple ways to do it but will be since we already have this extension installed you have that luxury to auto create all the stuff directly from the terminal point adding uh, the next step is what we need to add the docker files to the project so that it gets executed. Normally, if you don't have this docker uh, extension installed, you have to go ahead and create this docker file manually step by step. And that's a hectic process. So this docker extension kind of removes all this overhead and gives you this plain interface where you can directly go and create this ex uh, docker file. You can create a docker file, you can create a docker compose file. It's up to you if you are using multiple containers docker compose is the best way to go forward okay so let me open the command palette so i can type windows uh, windows or command shift p okay now if you type docker add docker files to the workspace so in what kind of application are we uh, interested in creating so it is basically a dot net asp.net application although it is not completely dot net core but again dot net 6 has the base of dot net core so it's good we can go ahead with this now what kind of system are we using since max since i'm using mac we'll go ahead with linux you can go ahead with windows now what is the port that i want it to be exposed in 
let me give some random port it doesn't matter actually but whichever port we are mentioning we have to access that port 5010 i've given okay so here it is telling do you want to add a docker compose file yeah let's do it so we we were able to generate this docker file pretty quickly directly from the docker extension okay first it will what it will do it will pull the dotnet 6 base image as you see it has automatically detected which version of dotnet we are using or which is installed in our machine and it is downloading the respective dotnet version and it is setting the working directory to dash app because by default everyone has some kind of every images will be having their own working directory if you go to the documentation of this you will be able to find what is the correct working directory and what port it is being exposed with now secondly the urls so how do we access this web api so it's telling whatever is your localhost just add http localhost and port 5010 it should do the job okay it is adding a default user so that it can run the basic commands okay it's not required when you are going into the server mode this is there are two images involved here first image is is for hosting the application but the next image is for building the application so first what will happen is it will build the dotnet project it will extract the published files and it will put it to the base image how it works is it will now pull the dotnet sdk image for building the work directory is slash source now it is what it is doing is it is copying the entire uh, project content along with the cs project and moving it to the directory then the second normally what we do first we do a dot net restore so similarly the same steps are being repeated okay so first the cs project got copied it did a dot net restore so that the necessary plugins are installed then it copied the entire content of the project into the docker container okay so it is setting the work directory now now it is running dotnet build command okay so it is building it in the release mode and the output is where app build now after building it it needs to publish it right so again so what it is doing it is running the same command uh, in the same image itself it is running another command that is dotnet publish and the output folder will be again app slash publish now once the entire publish is completed all our files are present in the app publish location the normal behavior right what do we do is we provide a publish location then all the files are published over there then the files are being copied from that place and dumped into ias or any other servers we are using so similar kind of job is being repeated over here so first we moved everything to publish then now we have all the code in our publish all the final dlls in the publish then we'll use the the image that we pulled in first right to host our dotnet application so what it's going to do is it's going to pull this set this working directory again and it is going to copy from publish what does this mean is it's nothing but it's like a alias name for the build so that we don't go ahead and uh, forget what are the steps where it is coming from so every build or every dotnet uh, image is given some kind of alias name in the docker file okay so it is using this image okay if you see this image actually uses this one okay so internally it is trying to pull the publish location from here okay and then move it to the base base image is nothing but this one so to this image it is trying to copy all the necessary information so from the app publish it will take entire thing and copy it to the current location okay that is nothing but the app directory now we always have to start an entry point like how we'll get started so it executes this command called dot net ms dot net 6 dll so as soon as it starts it the app is started now there are various ways to run this project okay what you can do is you can directly right click on this build the image so as soon as it builds it it will start it will try to pull all this information from the internet it might take some time based on your internet speed where you are or have you already built it for earlier if you have already built it earlier 
then it will be pretty quick because all the image will be available in your docker cache now if i go to my docker images right you will see few new images got added that is ms.net the image is created it's not yet running okay so to build it so right now what we have done is we have just built this image right so if you go to this docker extension you will find the image is built but is it running that's the question okay so right now what you can do is right click run so if you run it now our image is running so how do you verify whether it is running or not so from the command line you can do docker ps you will see there will be one image okay that is the dot net image that is getting executed to verify it what we can do is we can again uh, just open one more tab localhost 5010 enter yeah that's it so you see our api started responding so now we are already up and running with our docker container so this is how you can easily set docker container but i'll be showing you few more steps so it's not that it is limited to this okay so first of all what i'll do is let me stop this container so as soon as i stop and i'll try to access this url again so it cannot find this let's see the advantage of docker compose so instead of running all this commands right you can just write docker compose if you write docker compose up right it internally uses the docker file if we go into this docker compose yaml you see it is using this docker file and exposing the same ports over here so it's making the steps little bit automated now we go over here enter it starts up now let's stop it let me go into a new terminal docker compose down okay so now it is down so guys this is how you can easily get started with dotnet and docker Amazing.